Hello, everybody. I'm Amanda Mock of AmandaMockArt.com, and today I'm here with Dominique Hurley. Hi, Dominique. Hi, Amanda. So good to be here with you and with all of you. It's good to see you. Dominique Hurley is an intuitive visionary artist, educator, and light worker who guides you to explore and express your true self as you connect to your inner guidance. Grounded in her love of beauty and the beauty of love, Dominique delivers insight and inspiration through her energy-infused artwork, intuitive services, and her intuition into action treasure map, five steps to a happy, healthy life. Dominique was the godmother of the 2018 Atlantic Visual Arts Festival and won a 2019 Arts and Letters Award. After three continents and five Canadian provinces, she now calls the island of Newfoundland her home. Thank you for that intro. <laughs> <laughs> that was a mouthful. You're quite accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone is when you really just pick out the highlights, you know, it's a, a wonderful thing. <laughs> if we focus on what's wonderful and good about us, it all sounds wonderful. This is true. I need to write something about myself. Maybe I can sound that, that fancy. <laughs> yeah. um, so just to start out, when, when did you start your intuitive painting? Mm, well, the intuitive painting, I'd say first, second year university. I almost failed art in high school. That's important to know because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not an artist. I've, you know, but I almost failed art in high school because I wasn't good at doing what the teacher wanted me to do and sort of like copying somebody else's style and that kind of thing or the materials that they were using. But in university, my uncle gave me uh, money to go spend in an art store and I discovered sort of the predecessors to um, liquid and, and uh, fluid acrylic paints. So these days I use like golden acrylic. This is like hand cream consistency. It's like the ones in the dollar store, except that the professional ones are like $60 a bottle instead of one. So and, much better. <laughs> and I love golden. And the fluid ones are the high flow from golden, which is more like water, but it's got the same intensity of color. So I started working with those and that's when I got into it. But I got into it even more um, after university when I had achieved my dream job right out of university. So I'd been working towards it since the age of 15. And a couple of years into my dream job, it wasn't my dream job anymore, but in my mind it was like the end goal. So I didn't know what else to do. And, and the more unhappy I was at work, the more I needed to paint on the weekends. And then I started painting so much. My whole weekends were like these painting marathons that were absolute bliss and therapy and everything mm -hmm. you want that uh, I had so much artwork I needed to start ex exhibiting and selling the work to like liberate space in the studio and also to buy more supplies. So that's when I really got into it. So the more unhappy I was in life, the more I needed the art to get in touch with my true self in the studio. And it taught me so much. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I hope we get more into that because that's definitely. I will. Definitely. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the whole plan. Like I'm excited to share that. <laughs> it's done um, wonders for me. I mean, that was, you know, 35 years ago. So. Uh, yeah. And look at you now, like mm -hmm. all the time and living, living a beautiful life. I think um, so. Why do you call it energy infused intuitive visionary painting now? Okay. Well, um, Let's break that into three parts. The energy infused is I'm now also a certified naturotherapist or in some provinces it's called naturopath. It's basically over a thousand hours of energy healing training and that, but I only always did it for myself. And I don't work with clients directly except when I create a soul energy portrait for someone. That's like two weeks of energy work and painting and a whole bunch of other stuff you can find out on my website. But um, using it in the studio on myself and in the artwork so that it's infused in the artwork. And a lot of times when people are face to face with some of my paintings or they come into an exhibition, it can be extremely powerful and intensely beautiful. And to see the reactions of people, those who are sensitive to it, and some people don't even know what's happening, but they're just... I've witnessed people come in and just stand in front of a painting and just like right into tears and just this catharsis or this just waves of love. It's like this relationship that happens in the moment with the painting. And I just need to step back and give them their space because it's so beautiful to witness, but it also, you know, it's so moving that the energy that helped me in the studio when I was creating, if this was one painting that's not for a client, but for myself is also helping others. It stays in there and it helps uplift people to the level that, 
uh, they need to be or that they want to be. So the, the painting they're attracted to is always one that's calling them to a level higher on their own path. So that's the energy infused. Got that? <laughs> Got I'll, it. I'll, it. I'll be full of mouthfuls. The intuitive part, that's the fun part. And there is a guide to intuitive painting in my free resources on my website. Um, and that's basically where you start a painting and you have no idea what it's going to be. Absolutely no expectations. Some of my paintings, like the one beside, uh, behind me, and we're going to see this one evolve in a little slideshow that I've got for you. Um, this is like 20 layers. One layer informs the other. You're just listening to the art. You're, you're being in the moment with whatever layer happens because with acrylic paint, you can just keep layering on and on and on. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it's without expectations. There are no mistakes. It's not about the end goal. It's about the process. And it's a way of tuning into yourself as you're painting. That's the intuitive part. And that's what a lot of people, when they talk about intuitive painting, if you see that online, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. The visionary part um, is, is in itself two parts. The visionary art in itself is art that uh, people channel to help with the ascension of the planet, that help with the good, the highest good of all. Um, I also use the word visionary because clairvoyancy is my most, uh, the strongest of my intuitive skills. When I close my eyes or I'm leading a meditation or I'm doing a divine storytelling time session for a client, and we're going to do a, a meditation later on in this interview, which will be fun as I'm guiding you through an exercise. When I close my eyes, it's like seeing a Disney Pixar movie in my mind's eye. So it's like you're having a dream sequence when you're asleep. Mm -hmm. As I see everything, I record everything. And as I record everything, I record the story and then I will um, work on a painting and the vision has its own symbolism, but also as I'm working on the symbolism, the meaning evolves, right? So there's a lot, I, I always write a lot and journal a lot in my painting process and that's all on my blog. And I think I'm gonna show you actually right now if I can share my screen uh, let's just do that screen share here share and this I'm just going to show you um, slideshow forgive the little delays here as we um, get to figure this out all right can you see that I can see it yay so this is uh, enter the mandala and we're gonna do a mandala later so the 12 universal laws so the visionary part for example as I was doing this series, my team of divine helpers, and that can be anything that you, like belief systems don't matter here. Mm -hmm. For me, it's like angels, archangels, God, the universe, source energy, my own higher self. Don't let vocabulary get in the way with, with, with you know, enjoying the process of connecting within and connecting to what's bigger than you. Um, but as I asked my guides, they directed me to buy 12 canvases. And then they said, um, you're going to create a collection on the universal laws. Now, I don't know, Amanda, have you seen the movie, The Secret? Or have you heard of the book, The Secret, I, The Law of Attraction? I've, re I, I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm familiar with it, but I haven't read it or seen okay. it. Yeah. It was really, really popular about 10, 10, 15 years back, but it's continued to be popular. The law of attraction is the most popular of all 12 laws. It's basically, if you're happy, you're attracting more happy things to you. It's like whatever vibe you're at, you're like a magnet for the same vibe. So if you're like down and depressed and anxious, you got to work on raising your vibration or else what you're going to attract is more of that anxious, depressed stuff. And that's what you're going to see in the world around you. So that's one of the 12 mm -hmm. laws and there's 12 and they're out there all the time, these 12 laws, and we're all using them, but it's about using them to our advantage versus our disadvantage. And this is total non-denominational, so it doesn't matter your, your belief system. But I would close my eyes and I would record the little mini movies they gave me were only about 12 to 15 minutes long. Um, and I'd record that and mini movies is what I call, you know, what they, my guides give me when I close my eyes, my visions. And as I was working on these paintings, um, and there's, there's, oh, it's not letting me change. Yeah, there we go. There's 12 of them. And the first one that you saw is like a summary with my favorite piece from all of these 12. Um, as I was working on them, like the second one right over, whoa, <laughs> fun. There we go, pause. No, it's not gonna let me do it. So as I was working on one, that's about 70, hours long, the oh. symbolism and the meaning of that law, they were teaching me so that I can then teach others. So this was my way, like I took a whole year working on this collection to um, basically uh, 
learn what the laws were and then share yeah. that with others. That's amazing. So that's the visionary part. So energy infused, intuitive, visionary art. Wow. <laughs> it not be that complicated. I mean, that's my whole, it's my spiritual practice as well as my art practice, right? So right. if you just want to do the intuitive painting to play in the studio, that's, you know, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. But you'll get as much out of it for you wherever you're at. Um, how do intuitive painting and intuitive living relate? Mm, fantastic question. Uh, and that's where I am going to share the screen again with you. Doo -doo. Basically, they're the same. What I've learned in the studio is um, what I've learned in life. And, sorry, doing two things at the same time here. So, play from current slides. So, my life philosophy is basically that intuition is an invitation to growth and a great gateway to creativity in your art and in your life. So, what I learned in the studio, I was very, very left brain um, growing up, but trained left brain. Uh, I, I came from a military family, you know, mother, brother, father, like the whole gang. And uh, however, I was also very right brain, but my right brain was shrinking because we're trained in our world to be very left brain, the action oriented, the rational, logical brain, which is so necessary. We need that, but we also need the right feminine intuitive brain. And you need to work those in balance like a marriage. And so what the studio helped me do was reclaim my right brain, reclaim my intuitive and my creative skills, and that applied in life. So I'm going to show you, and, and that's from what I learned in my own intuition. So when I was really unhappy at work, and uh, this is what you'll see is a course on these five steps here. When I, uh, I think in the free opt-in that I'm offering with this, with this uh, podcast, with this um, summit interview is... Uh, and a, a 75 minute tutorial on using those, on developing those intuitive skills so that you can use them in your life. Because when I was at that government job, that was my dream job for a while, but I needed to get out after four years. It's like, okay, what's next? I opened myself up to my intuition based on everything I'd learned in the studio. And I used all of my resources that were possible. And from there, I developed like a life by, by design. I ended up traveling three continents, five provinces and a few different careers and studying. And, um, you know, it's brought me to where I am now, which is awesome. And, and by following that intuitive living um, is the same principles as intuitive painting. So I'm going to read you now. I actually prepared this. As you're looking at the development of that painting that was behind me, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to read to you a bit about what you learn about in the studio, what I learned that helped. So these are all the layers of the painting behind me, and it was about chakra balancing. The studio is my sanctuary, my sandbox, my classroom, my therapy space. My art is as much about the creative process as it is about the final result. I've learned so much through intuitive painting that has served me in life. Here are a few. Just begin. Set your intentions. In this case, it was energy work. I needed to balance my own chakras. Use all your tools and resources. Have fun. Let go of control or expectations. That's a big one. Embrace the mystery. Allow things to evolve naturally, inspired one step at a time. Sometimes there's chaos before order. Take inspired risks. Remember to connect to the divine oneness. Get centered, connected, and grounded. And as you saw there, it's okay to have an awkward teenager phase in your paintings and in your life. Love yourself and your painting through it. Let go of perfection. Trust that it's all part of the process, an important piece of the puzzle, from baby steps to leaps of faith. Don't be attached to the past, like you might have liked a layer 20 layers back, but don't be attached to it. Just live in the present, in the now. Focus on what you love and add more of that to it. Express your unique voice in your unique way. All experience adds texture and depth. Don't give up and don't compare yourself to other people or paintings. Reframe your experience, look at it from new perspectives. Journey within, see what needs to come out. 
Love what is as a necessary step to loving what will be. Take nature breaks for inspiration and connection. Slow down, meditate. As you can see, there's thousands of dots and that is pure blissful meditation time for me. Hours and hours of dot making. Nourish the soil, do your inner work as you proceed. Appreciate the rhythms of all seasons, which are all in the tree in this painting. Bless and give thanks for the journey and the final result. Love the whole and the details. So that's a bit what intuitive painting has taught me in the studio. That's wonderful, wonderful. Um, so how is your art now helping others? Another good question. <laughs> I think, um, well, one, as I talked about before, sorry, just trying to find you again as my screen went wonky. <laughs> the, um, what I learned in the studio, I use as the groundwork for when I'm teaching others. So for example, I already talked about the Mandela collection, the universal laws. Now people can access on my website and the free resources, the guide to the 12 universal laws. Um, whenever I'm teaching intuitive painting courses, I took pictures. I, was, I went across the province. I was hired to teach in the schools and also with adults. Uh, and then I made a guide online that you know people can play with. They don't need to take a course. And, I love sharing, so you're gonna find so much free stuff on my website. Um, another good example is the last collection that I just finished working on. It took me nine months to create the collection. It's 11 paintings that are two by four feet, basically, and I can show them to you here. I'll share the screen again. And, uh, doo -doo -doo, share screen, here we go. Thanks for your patience, everyone. And I'm gonna slideshow. Do, 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 slideshow, play from current slide. Hey, all right, you're seeing that? I'm seeing it, yep. Okay, so these 11 paintings that were all two by four feet, it was an, intros, um, an introspective or a retrospective of my own personal and spiritual growth. Again, I was guided to do this collection um, by my team of divine helpers right at the time where they all look like a stained glass window sort of inspired. And that's because I was in the cathedral in Ottawa with my father right after my mom was uh, placed in long-term care. And um, it was inspired that I do this collection. So it was a very, a lot of personal growth, you know. Um, I learned so much from the creation and on my free resources you can access the index to all 11 where you can see the, the symbolism evolve and um, see the painting evolve and, and read about the symbolism. But then after that was finished, I spent another, um, the whole thing was 15 months, so another six months after that creating video lessons. What I learned in the studio was for me, but now I'm turning it over to you and to those who are interested in these video lessons, each one connecting to a different theme. Uh, like if you take a look at, um, I don't know, the, the fifth one there, that's all about body self-image and self-love. Mm. The next one beside it is about creativity. The next one is about community, nature. Like they each have a theme. And mm -hmm. so I've developed these video lessons with exercises for people to reconnect to their true self. And I think now more than ever, now that people have been like kicked off the hamster wheel, um, they're sort of like, now what? Who am I? A lot of people are sort of at a loss. And it's so important to reconnect, to know who you are, so that your decisions are made in alignment with that true self, with your truth, with who you truly are, not based on what everybody else is saying or thinking, but being able to make decisions that are right for you. And that's what the art has taught me. That's what my intuition. I also teach people how to connect to their intuition. And that'll be your, your freebie that you'll find in the links below. And um, also the intuitive services that I offer people. So for example, this visual gift here is an example of that layered process, um, but in photography. So what I do when I do an intuitive reading for someone, it's called a, a divine storytelling time uh, package. It comes with your story that I channel for you, which is like a Disney Pixar movie. And it's about an hour long. So people use this as their intuitive data 
for a lot of people, accessing their intuition is the difficult part because if you have any stress or anxiety or it's not that developed or practiced, then that's the hardest part. But with this intuitive data, then they can play detective. And what does the story mean to them? What does one little part, like if they go in there with a question and I teach them how to use it, you ask a question, you go into your story and you find out what the answers are, but I'm not telling you your answers. I'm not giving you guidance on your futures for you to help develop your intuitive skills. Um, and with that also comes a visual gift where I'm inspired to use five or six or however many of my photographs to create a visual gift. Like this one, I think there's three or four um, different uh, images in it. And layering that up it's sort of a summary of the story for that person so as they're looking at it you know the angel will have something to do there's a labyrinth in there down at the bottom there's a stupa from a meditation garden there's a butterfly here and like there's all sorts of things that will reveal themselves and i show them what the original art is as well the original different photos so that where the photo was taken and what's in it it's all clues but they assign meaning for it so i like to help people develop their intuition be it through the art, through the intuitive services, if I'm doing a, um, uh, through teaching them the six clairs, which are in the video too. And we're going to practice this when we do our little uh, meditation art exercise here together. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't matter how the, and the information, the intuition is coming through you. Like some people may have heard me already, um, you know, talk about my visions. It's like, oh my God, I don't have that. I want that. But like, how did you hear about Amanda's summit today? Some of you will have heard about it from her ads, from my ads, from my newsletter, from a friend saying, hey, you got to be a part of this. Does it matter how you heard about it? No, it really doesn't. What matters is that you heard the message and you joined this summit. You decide to listen to this because something in you moved you to action. So from intuition into action, which is so necessary in, in intuition. So just going over these a bit, because that's going to help us when we yeah. that's going to help us when we go through our uh, little meditation and Amanda you can tell me if one of these is stronger for you or if you get a sense but it doesn't matter you'll get to experience it to see clairvoyance is your sight your inner sight but also how you associate to things you see with your eyes open and the meaning that comes through that Clear cognizance is clear knowing and that's like you know when you're in the shower and you get this brain flash like oh what an awesome idea where'd that come from yeah. Yeah, yeah I did. Clear, cognizance. clear cognizance, I feel like is pretty strong with me. Yeah, yeah. And so does it matter that you may or may not get visions? No, if you get the other one, like it doesn't matter what channel they come through, your guidance comes through. What matters is that you connect to it. So it's the guidance from your heart, from your higher self, and also your guidance to the divine. Like it's, it's, there's different right. levels of it, but it all comes through. If it feels loving, it's your inner guidance. It's your intuition. If it, leads to any harm or whatever that is completely not your intuition yes um clear audience is clear hearing and that only happened to me like really evidently once or twice in my life and once was when i moved here to newfoundland it's like i was looking at the computer and all of a sudden i heard that's where you're moving when i was on my yahoo homepage and it was some news story but with a photo and it was a nature photo could have been anywhere in the world and it was just clear in my head that's where you're moving. I was like, oh, please, not some war-torn country. I'm not strong enough for that. And it turned out to be Newfoundland, which I absolutely love. Um, uh, Claire's sentience is your feeling. And that's what empaths have. It's basically, you know, you see somebody and you know exactly how they feel. Uh, you walk into a room, you can feel like, oh my God, it's heavy in here. Or, oh, it's, you know, that fun light energy. So Claire's sentience is through your feelings. Claire aliens is through your sense of smell. Uh, you might, you know, go through this meditation that I'm leading and you might have a scent that comes up that reminds you of something or somewhere or someone. And Claire Gustin's is taste. Those two last ones are a little rarer. And there's also the whole world of symbolism, which I fit into clairvoyance, but I also use separately because my soul energy portraits, everything I do and I coach on, it's all about um, the symbolism and, and the power of symbolism, but also what it means to you, not just what it means in the symbolism dictionaries on Google. Sure, right. use that, but... First, tune in, what does it mean to you? So those are sort of what we're going to explore today. That's fascinating. I can't wait to do that part. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to get out of the slideshow here, but first I'm going to just share this one last uh, 
thing with you. This is one of my favorite quotes. I usually start my presentations with this, but it's from Einstein. And the more I'm discovering about him, the more that he's so much more than I ever knew he was. Mm -hmm. um, but the intuitive mind is a sacred gift. And the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. And um, let me exit slideshow here. All right. Are we back on together? Yep, we're here. <laughs> okay. So I think that's really important is that your intuition should be your leader in life and your left brain should be the one to help you implement the steps to get that intuition into action, to get it like manifest in your life. You need both. And it's the same in the studio. It's the same in everything. You can get these amazing ideas, but if you don't follow your guidance, it's completely useless, right? So you have to take those steps. And I myself am a huge chicken. <laughs> I am not a natural risk taker. I don't really like change. But if you looked at my resume and if you've seen my life, you would never, ever, ever guess that. But when you're called forward to grow through your intuition, it's always a stretch of your comfort zones. And to stretch is a little uncomfortable, right? But it's asking you to grow. And that stretch of your comfort zone is when it's guided, I mean, you start with baby steps and then you end up, you know, taking leaps of faith because you, those little baby steps are so rewarding. And I've learned through my life that, wow, my guidance will never misguide me. Like even now with, with what's happening in the world, um, I had been strongly guided to uh, plan a two month solo spiritual retreat in Ireland at all these monastic sites and Buddhist centers and in nature, basically just going deep within to to open myself up to a new creative project. And then I've had to cancel everything because of the virus and that. And, but I have to trust that my going through all of this was part, it was so strongly guided that I have to accept it. I mean, we have, we have no choice but to accept it, but in terms of knowing that something happened during my planning of that trip, something happened in my learning a deeper layer of non-attachment to my plans and to what I thought this spring would and summer would be for me. All of that is part of the bigger picture. And sometimes we don't understand the bigger picture. So it's just like when you're working on an intuitive painting, you don't know where the painting is going. Like when you're in layer two of 20 or whatever, you just have to trust it's going somewhere and that everything is informing the texture and the depth of the final art piece. Well, it's the same with our lives. The more trust we have, um, and the more, you know, just being open to taking inspired action on a daily moment, living in the now moment by moment, raising our vibration, making sure that we're in a state where we can hear guidance, where we're keeping our energy up, where we're always connecting to love instead of fear. Like mm -hmm. some of that fear that's happening is, is warranted. But in that moment, you can still choose to, you know, are we going for a pandemic of fear or a pandemic of love? So it's all about um, choosing love in every moment. And as you can tell, I can go on and on and on about and this okay. stuff and nonstop. I haven't given you any chance to like, no, it's okay. Come in here. <laughs> oh, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the conversation and, um, it's, it's going well. So I'm not going to interrupt you while you're informing me. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's oh, awesome. well, I've learned so much. And, and so when you ask me, you know, how is your art helping others? Well, whether it is a painting that they bring into their own homes, a divine storytelling time, intuitive reading that they hired me to do for them, or one of the courses or my thousands of blog posts and things that I share um, on my on my website. I think if it's helping me, it's going to help others. And I can only teach from what I've learned. And so if, if people resonate with what they've heard here, then they'll know that they'll find something and exploring, going onto the website and exploring what it is that's there for them um, in all my free resources or in my paid services or in a piece of artwork or a print that they want to bring into their life. That's, yeah, that's how, that's how I'm helping others by helping myself first. And how do you, this is a little bit of a segue, but how do you handle your inner critic? Because I'm, we talk about, you know, um, staying positive and staying inspired and staying, you know, at a higher level, but like, how do you handle when the inner critic is like really strong? 
Uh, and again, it's the same whether you're looking at your painting and being critical of that or being critical of your life or being critical of your reactions in life. I think the more training you have, like in those 12 universal laws, what they taught me, I, I'm surrounded by that art. And so, you know, I walk by and it's like, oh, yeah, thanks for the reminder. It's like aim towards what you want. Don't focus on what you don't want. That's a law of polarity. So just looking at that reminds me to uh, focus on where I'm heading and what I do want instead of just wallowing in the it didn't work. I did this or, or whatever. So I think everything that I learn in the studio, and this is a constant practice. I've been at this for 35 years, right? And I'll say that at some points I left painting for a while because I was teaching English overseas and in universities across Canada. So I went more into photography and, and the same processes can be used, you know, when you're out in nature and, and taking a walk with nature, uh, not with your head in nature, but when you're just being with nature, like everything that comes in helps to just accept what is and accept the seasons. And so the more, personal growth work that I do for myself, the more I can stay on track. And staying on track is something that uh, it's constant work, you know, like I'll start my meditations. I'll do meditation almost every morning. And I like guided meditations. I've channeled a lot that you can find on my YouTube channel or on my website. But when I'm not doing my own, there's one other person that I follow and I do his energy transmissions and his meditations. And uh, they just help me start the day. And there are days, I'll admit, there are days where it's like, oh, I'm just going to wallow in this heavy energy and watch Netflix all day. Because one, I love movies. I'm a total movie buff. Um, but two, it's like, all right, I'm just going to press the reset button when I go to sleep tonight. And tomorrow's a new day. It's like, just accept that. And as an empath, I'm sometimes processing stuff that's not my own. And so to be, to be able to accept that, love that, release it for myself and for the planet or whoever it is that's, um, you know, having that impact and, and learning to discern what's mine and what's not, you know, there's really heavy energies right that's, now in the world. That's interesting that you mentioned that because I'm, I'm empathic myself. And what, what do you do to release that energy? What do you do when you, when you find that, or that confusion where you don't know if it's yours or not, and you're just like, what in the world? Yeah. How do you release? Well, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a really recent and um, good example of that is, uh, at the end of February, no, beginning of February, February 3rd. So it would have been, you know, a few days before February started. That whole week before February 3rd, I was getting these little mind farts. And that's all, that's, that's what I call them, mind farts, because they, they pop in and out. It's like, whoa, you know, hmm, all right. But I don't attach anything to it. And they were sort of like, I'm ready to let go of this life. I'm tired of living. It was just, what, if I'd said, this is what I thought to somebody, they would have said, oh my goodness, you're having suicidal thoughts. Um, and when they're just little blurbs like that, I know I'm picking them up or whatever, but they, for the very first time, they were happening every day for about a week, except that they were also happening when I was happily snowshoeing in the backyard or, you know, in bliss painting in the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I really knew that they weren't mine. So it was obvious that they weren't mine. What I didn't realize until I got the call, however, is that it was my mother trying to prepare me and trying to let me know that she was letting go. So on February 3rd, she passed and the painting that I was working on, which was an intuitive visionary painting, just based on visions I was receiving, I ended up calling it in passing. And it's all about uh, that passing from the body back into spirit and, um, and, and receiving those messages from her after I knew. I didn't know what they were during the week because I wasn't really asking, uh, you know, what is this and who is it from? I was just kind of like, whoa, this is bizarre. And so painting, just staying in your joy uh, on a daily basis, if I'm feeling heavy, like if I wake up heavy from something uh, um, that came through during the night or whatever, my favorite way, uh, in addition to those energy transmission meditations I do, uh, guided meditations I do, is I come down to the studio and I've got one of those mini trampolines, you know, the rebounders. Yep. <laughs> I will put three Sanskrit songs on. Sanskrit is like those yoga chants mm -hmm. and full blast. And I will let my iPod shuffle, choose which ones. And sometimes they will give me 15 minute songs instead of like the three minute ones. And then I just know that I needed more that morning. <laughs> and I will dance and sing 
to those three Sanskrit songs. And there's no way that after those three that I'm feeling heavy anymore. Like that just raises my vibration surrounded by my art, looking around and just kind of like blissing out. And, uh, and then I, you know, follow that with yoga. So the whole making sure that we have time for our self care routine is so important mm -hmm. that you start the day, right. That you end the day with gratitude. Um, you know, that you don't, you don't deny that you're going through stuff. Like that was important for me right. when I was, you know, getting, I'm not denying that I'm having a low day. I'm allowing for it, but I'm not getting stuck there. I'm like, okay, I'm going to give you, you know, I'm going to give you half a day of movies. Just be with whatever. Um, sometimes I watch movies just for the fun of it, but I mean, you know, in that case of just kind of like, I can't cope with today. I'm just going to that. Yep. And then after that, it's like, okay, enough of this reset. And sleep is an amazing reset button. Uh, you know, like you connect back to spirit in your sleep and you come, you wake up again and it's not allowing that old heavy stuff to come in. As soon as you wake up, you've got like 17 seconds, according to Abraham Hicks, which is one of my spiritual mentors, um, to, to, you know, like self-correct and get yourself into the like, oh yes, okay, let's, what am I grateful for today? What, what am I looking forward to? Or just, you know, start a meditation, do something that makes you happy or that helps you connect as things don't make you happy. They help you connect to your natural happiness that's inside. And, um, and then if it's, I mean, those who suffer from, from uh, mental illness and have brain chemical issues, like I, I'm not an expert in that. Right. Uh, and so they can do all these techniques too, but they may need, um, you know, medical help as well. And so do what's right for you. And that's where listening to your intuition and developing your intuitive skills can help you make those decisions that are right for you. Cause it's really hard, especially when you're getting all these conflicting information from magazines from the news from your friends from your family and you're feeling like oh my god what's what's the right thing for me mm -hmm. you your answers are always within and that's what i teach people to connect with and that's what that free tutorial is that uh, you can sign up through the little link that amanda will put on this page for you somewhere <laughs> so excited um well going from there do you do you feel like doing the tutorial the demo now absolutely okay so you guys ready? What we're, I'm going to give you a little intro to it first. And uh, if you've seen uh, on uh, Amanda's email or whatever, what you need, it, you can do this in different ways. Like this is basically, the basic of what you need is a piece of paper with three circles in it. And the circles don't have to be the same like this. You can make the small, the middle one uh, bigger if you want. You can make it, uh, you know, like the small, you can make them equal. You can make them, and you can do it on a piece of paper or you can choose to, like take out a big square canvas and 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 do this as a painting but obviously you won't do this in the 20 minutes or whatever how much time we have left um you'll be pausing this video and doing one step at a time one circle at a time or use your paper as a draft and then after that spend like a week working on this just being in your bliss or a couple of hours or however much time you need Everybody's would look different. And so I don't have an example for you. You've seen some of my mandalas, but some of you might choose to do this through collage, through words and poetry, through with crayons and markers or paint on canvas or watercolors. Like do whatever moves you and remember that the final look really doesn't matter. This is about the process. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to guide you through a guided meditation. I'll put the music on and we'll go within. I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to channel whatever comes through. I know there's three circles, but I don't know what will appear in my mind's eye to guide you. And so I'm going to just allow whatever instructions come through. And you can pause this recording and spend more time on one section if that's what you need, if you want to spend more time there. But Amanda's going to tell me about how much time we've got for this meditation. We're, we're doing good. So um, we still have half an hour if you okay. want to take up that much Maximum time. Half the whole an hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, just to give me an idea, uh, because yes, I kind of lose control when I channel. Okay. Uh, but if ever I'm going way too much, like you just chime in, all right? <laughs> so please, if you're driving and listening to this, don't. 
like stop here don't do this while you're driving and uh, but there are no mistakes and if you do this with painting layer by layer by layer as you're working with it you're going to get even more messages than what you received in the meditation you might also choose to listen to the whole meditation with your eyes closed and just ask your mind to remember some of the details or you might stop after each one and i'll probably give you a clue a, a cue there of when of when that changes from one to the other but spend as much time as you need in each circle okay. and the purpose of this mandala is to help you connect to your intuition no matter what channel it comes through and and i'll probably be giving instructions on that too it's just a way for you to experience intuitive visionary art and the amazing feelings that come through it, but let go of any expectations. And if stuff comes up with you, like if you need to process something and everything that comes up, sometimes things come to the surface that need to be let go or that just get seen as they're leaving, right? So like just allow it to be, but the goal is to raise your vibration and to help you connect to your inner guidance. So it's for your highest good if you trust that. Um, Wonderful. And the words that I use at the very beginning when I open the prayer, if you don't resonate with those, just replace them with whatever you resonate with. Are we good? We're good. All right. I'm going to start my music. And see you later. Welcome to this guided meditation, a visioning meditation to help you connect to your intuition, to your higher self, to your team of divine helpers, no matter what you call them. Before we begin, get comfortable. You don't need to be holding paper, pen, anything right now. Just, you could even be lying down if that's what you wish. Just try to stay awake so that you can remember what happens and then translate it in your own unique voice with your own choice of materials into an art piece that acts as a visual reminder to this guidance. Dear God and Goddess, guiding spirits of the highest vibration, archangels, angels, the universe, to our higher selves, the I am presence, to all that is. All beings of the highest vibration that work towards our highest good, welcome here. Thank you for helping us connect to our inner guidance, to activate our right creative brain, to help us to be in this moment. And so with your eyes closed, envisage yourself in a natural environment that lightens your vibration, that lightens your mood, that makes you feel good. Just spend a moment there admiring the details, being the director of your own movie. You have a choice, you have a role to play. And so look around and decide or see. And remember, you might simply know it, you might see it, you might smell it, you might hear it, and you might imagine it, knowing that your imagination is the first of the three higher levels of knowledge. Imagination, inspiration, intuition. Use this imagination as a gateway in. And in this beautiful setting, take a moment to set an intention in your heart of what feeling you want more of in your life. What feeling, don't worry about what that looks like, just what feeling are you ready to welcome more of in your everyday life?
often you can look at something you don't want and then just bounce it to the other side. What is the opposite? Often you know what you would love more of, be it love, peace, fun, joy, sense of abundance, anything for you. Choose one for now, knowing that you can repeat this meditation as many times as you want, as you'll have access to this recording. State this in your heart. I am ready to welcome emotion in my life. And now pay attention as wisps of color comes towards you, filling the space. It might be one dominant color that invites you to dance with it. And you might even at this point stand up and simply sway in it or sway in your chair or just sway in your mind. Bathe in this color that represents this emotion. There's nothing to understand here. There might be a choice to make. Why did you choose this color instead of another color? Just trust yourself. Trust that what you're seeing or sensing or choosing is right. Bathe in this color. Seeing the swirls like wisps of cloud or mist around you dancing. And allow it to penetrate the membrane of your skin. Allow it to infuse your body. Recognizing that you are part energy and part physical matter, that there is space between your cells, that this feeling can impregnate you with the feeling itself. Allow it to cleanse your cells. Allow it to nourish those cells. Allow it to fill your entire being. And in that movie screen in your mind's eye, look at yourself from above. Look below, like looking at your body in this scenery, but your body having become this color, seeing the color swirl inside of you. You might see visual representations of that word. You might see it like tattoos on you or simply floating through and around you. Just appreciate this first experience of the feeling. A few steps in front of you on the ground, your attention is being drawn to what looks like two footsteps that they're indented into the ground, be it in the sand or the grass or the water, wherever you are, you are moved to step into those two footprints. And as you do, you notice the color inside of you becoming pure as other colors are absorbed into Mother Earth. You unconsciously and now consciously know that whatever is not serving you is being absorbed by Mother Earth. Anything that's not serving you, be it on a physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual level, it's all being sucked into the ground. No need for concern though. Mother Earth is recycling it into something that will serve the planet. Its negative effects disappear as she transforms it. Leaving you now like a clear vessel of that color. Brighter, clearer. Take a minute now as I am quiet and you hear the music to walk around in your scenery. Being lighter in this color, in this feeling. Breathe, knowing your breath is your connection to life force, your connection to spirit. Breathe. Breathe. 
experience the space in any way you are moved to. Until you notice at the edge of this circular scenery, there's a gateway. It might be a fence with only one doorway or it might have many, but you're drawn to one of the gateways to stand on this side of it first so that you can be with the gateway, make your way there. And again, use your imagination if nothing comes to mind or to heart or to vision or to audience. Clear audience, that is your hearing or your knowing. Admire the details of the gateway. Might remind you of a era in history or somewhere in your childhood or somewhere you know now. It could be extremely ornate or very simple, made of a natural element or man-made, doesn't matter. Just note this gateway and anything that might be written on it or decorations, details. Feel it with your fingers. And as you do, that color within you starts to spread onto the gateway, making the full circle. And when that circle is complete, you know that it is time to step through the gateway. And as you do, you recognize that you are in your life. without seeing already, but there are eight areas of your life represented here that you're gonna be invited to walk through with me. And as you touch these areas of your life, you will see how it transforms or you will imagine or you will be like the director of a movie and make it happen, manifest it. See how infusing that part of your life with this color, with this feeling, helps that area of your life change. I won't talk as much here, I'll just name the eight areas. And when you're in there, walk around, touch someone, touch something, and just see how that aspect of your life changes when you are in your feeling. Starting with your health and wellness. If you need more time, simply pause for each one. And now go into your romantic relationship, even if it's non-existent. It is on some level. With each area, try to remember a significant change and transformation as you will somehow include these in your Mandela that you will draw or write or collage or whatever you choose to do at the end. And now let's go into your financial, your life planning area of your life. You are the manifester here. You are the conscious creator. What does bringing more of this feeling into that area of your life manifest?
And now, your social life. That's your role in community, friends, volunteering, your social life. to your physical environment, be it where you live in terms of your apartment or your house or the city or the country. Bring more of that feeling into that area of your life. Watch it and imagine it transform. As you now bring more of that feeling into your fun and recreation side of your life. And now into your career, your work, as it is now or as you want to see it transform. This includes if you're a stay-at-home mother, that is your work. Let go of the limiting definitions of what work and career might mean. How does bringing more of that feeling transform that area of your life? And now, your spiritual and personal growth area. Now allowing that color to just circulate around the whole circle, through you and around you, looking again at your area of health and wellness, romantic relationship, finances and life planning, your social life, your physical environment, your fun and recreation, your career, and your personal and spiritual development and what it is that you want to remember. And as we go now into the last section of the mandala, the last ring, as you stand at yet another gateway, but this one looks more like a fun slide that you can just jump into like a tube. And it goes around the circle like a spiral and ends up dropping you in a bed of flowers or a bed of leaves, whatever feels fun for you. It could be a water slide. And there, as you feel what it's like to have your ideal life, you know what it could be, what you're on your way to having, you invite your team of divine helpers. Call in this area now with you. It could be an angel, an archangel. It could be Jesus or Buddha or Muhammad. It could be a mentor or the essence of this feeling. Just 
a totem animal, no matter your belief system, be open to who is there, someone or a group that is there for your highest good. And now, in two minutes of silence, you're going to be asking them, one, knowing that they have brought a gift for you, accept that gift, see that like a movie scene in your mind's eye, receiving that gift and have a conversation with them, asking and then allowing that space to listen, knowing that what you hear or sense or know or see as their answers, if it feels good, it's in your highest good, even if it might require a stretch. Your question is, what can I do now in my everyday life or even in the next day or week to bring me closer to this vision of my life, to bring more of this feeling into my life? And so go in there with those two goals, to receive the gift they bring you, and you, ex you can explore the symbolism of that later on when you're painting or drawing, but be grateful for it. And two, asking, because when you ask, you shall receive. Ask them what inspired steps are next on your journey to bring more of that. And simply listen as I am quiet for two minutes as you enjoy this communion with your team of divine helpers. If you need more time, you'll be able to pause this recording. But if not, I invite you now to take a few deep breaths to get back into your body, breathing through your nose, releasing with a sigh through your mouth. Do that three times. Move your hands and feet, maybe rub your feet into the ground, grounding yourself back in this moment on your chair, wherever you happen to be. Coming back to us now. And I invite you to take your experiences and translate them in any way you feel moved to, knowing that this is yours and for you and can be a great masterpiece of a painting or a sketch on a piece of paper. Words or images or simply color. Relive the mandala through the three circles on your piece of paper. And may this serve you on your path to your highest good. It has been my pleasure, my pleasure, my pleasure to channel that for you. And I'm going to be using it for myself as well. So thank you for, for allowing it to come through because I'm connecting to whoever will be listening to this in the present or future um, and what they need. And so I, I always get so much out of what I channel for others. Thank you for, thank you for sharing. Thank you for being with us today. Oh, my pleasure, Amanda. Thank you for organizing this for the, all those who are moved to share it and to experience it. And 
it's been a real honor. It's been an honor for me as well. Thank you so much. And best of luck on your journey, Amanda, as an artist and as a healer and as whatever your path brings you. Thank you. And I hope to still be in touch with you because there's so much more I've learned today that I want to get into. So I'll, I'll be contacting you. <laughs> I'm easily accessible through my website as well. So um, Amanda, you'll be giving people my website, dominicurley.com and link to my free opt-in 75 minute tutorial on uh, in developing your intuitive skills, more about what is intuition. And, uh, but check out the free resources on my website. There is so much there that I've been developing over the years that I hope serves you. Thank you so much, Dominique. See you later. Bye. See you.